Next, what we're going to do is we're going to transform one of our functions. So as you can see in a problem like this, trying to identify what's happening, we have f of x is equal to the log base 4 of x plus 3. So what you should know is this is actually representing our c because it's inside the parentheses. So it's before we take the log base 4. If there were no parentheses, you would say that 3 would be d. But in this case, it's c. So what that's going to do is going to move our graph left 3. Now, what we need to do is we need to actually figure out what our primary function is. So we can basically take this and graph the log base 4 of x because that's the function we're actually going to have to transform. Now if you really need to, and I know this is going back a lot of steps, but you can actually go and figure out what the exponential function is. So if you're really struggling with graphing logarithms, all you have to do is find the graph of the exponential function with the same base, and then use that to help you figure out what your logarithmic graph is, just by switching your x and your y's. But hopefully you'll get to the point where you don't need to go through this, and you can actually just use your logarithm. So obviously, um, if I get an answer of 1, I know I've raised 4 to the 0 power. So that would be my ordered pair. And then, uh, well, we'll just go ahead. We'll go ahead and put some in here. So if I was doing this, I would say here, uh, and then 1, 2, 3, 4. And then obviously it would be 16 if I did uh, 4 squared. And then this would be 1 fourth. So my graph would look a little something like this. So therefore, my logarithm with a base of 4, uh, this would be 0, 1, so 1, 0. This would be negative 1, 1 fourth. So 1 fourth would give me negative 1. This ordered pair would be 1, 4. So we're going to use 4, 1. So my graph would look a little something like this when I graph it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to now transform that. So log base 4 of uh, x plus 3. Uh, again, what we're going to do is we're going to move it left 3. So we're going to take this logarithm and move everything left 3. So 1, 2, 3. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this brown function. So we're going to move it left 3. So what we'll do is we'll say 1, 2, 3. Uh, 1, 2, 3. And then 1, 2, 3. So my graph will look a little something like this. Now, when we shift our graph, that obviously is going to affect some things. Uh, it affects my x-intercept. Um, it also affects the fact that I have a vertical asymptote. So my original vertical asymptote for this function right here would be my y-axis. But when I move it left 3, I'm also going to have to move the vertical asymptote left 3. So my vertical asymptote will actually be there. So my vertical asymptote for this problem will be x is equal to negative 3. And that vertical asymptote is actually going to help me find my domain. So when I'm looking at a problem like this, the domain of my red function right here is going to be negative 3 comma infinity, where your range of your logarithms is going to be all real numbers. And we already talked about our vertical asymptote. It's going to be x is equal to negative 3. Be careful not to put that in a bracket because it cannot be equal to that negative 3.